Hello everybody and happy International Women's Day. I thought that for the month um, that we celebrate International Women's Day, and which we do at Trinity London, is I would do a series of talks with really inspiring women who I adore and um, have inspired me through my journey as an uh, entrepreneur. And we're gonna start today with Anya Hindmarch and she's the eponymous founder of Anya Hindmarch, which makes the most glorious handbags and accessories. And she's kind of, the woman who invented the concept of personalization around accessorizing. And she has done a lot of work about sustainability and sort of replacing the plastic bag. Find out more when that Waitrose bag is coming into the store because we're all so desperate or Sainsbury's. But for those of you who don't know her so well, she has also brought up five children and she's done all of this as well. And I think that work-life balance is something that we all find difficult. So I'm gonna ask her a few questions. We're just gonna have a conversation and I'm really excited for you to join us. Hello, my darling, how are you? I'm happy Women's Day, International Women's Day. Happy International Women's Day. You know, I was on something earlier, Anya. Uh, we do something with our tribe. And this woman was telling me, and it's just very interesting, the, or, do you know the origin, or, origins of International Women's Day? No, I don't touch you. It's like something like 1911 in Austria. Wow, wow. Yeah, well, um, and I don't know, but, but this woman was researching as we were on this big live with the Trini tribe. And because I was saying, how did it start? Because there was another lady there in her late 50s who'd grown up in a communist country. And International Women's Day was a weird time because the men gave the women carnations. And it was a kind of like, it, it, she felt, in, she, she, she didn't feel comfortable with what it was all about. And it was only when she came to live in the West and a few years ago. And, and then she asked me, when did it make an impact on you? And I said, only a, when I probably started my own business, because it's just become more and more this, this day to really look at everything. But I don't know when for you, well, when, came, when you became aware of the concept of International Women's Day. I mean, for me, probably only three or four years ago, honestly, when we started really, yeah. well, so it, there was a sort of, we did a project with the Prince's Trust, actually, which was a nice project sort of about three years ago. And we were working with SmartWorks this year. So it's sort of been those engagements. But interesting, I did a, a chat this morning with, with um, some really interesting group of women. And there are a few of them saying, do we still need it? You know, do you think actually women have sort of actually that's now equal? Are there other issues? And, and the group generally said, no, it's still an issue and it still needs addressing. That was just quite an interesting conversation. Yeah. And I think it depends what industries you're in. But, uh, you know, the, the the theme this year is about the bias that still is there and and you know as a woman i was thinking mm -hmm. there is bias i mean i find female ageism bias mm -hmm. I, I so i think it's it's um i think there's definitely always good to have that focus mm -hmm. to look at. but can i just go back because i there's lots of people who are so excited you're on and um i just want to ask you, because although we are friends, I've never asked you about your business in the early days, but when did you first have your idea? What was that first thing you drew? And when did you then go from that to your first product and how long was the process? So um, I think I had first drew my first handbag when I was 16. I always used to make lots of things um, uh, when I was really young, but I, I remember my mother gave me one of her old handbags when I was about 16. And, and I remember how it made me feel. And I think that's the fantastic thing about what we both do we i hope we make women feel better and ultimately i think that actually it's not it's not about actually how you look it's all about all about inner confidence that actually makes you look good um and so i remember how that bag made me feel and um I was fascinated by the craftsmanship and the stitching and the leather. And it was just a, a really lovely, it's a bit like a beautiful steering wheel. I mean, it's just a lovely thing. Um, and when I was 18, um, I remember going to a talk at school by a girl who was in the fashion industry. And she, she was talking about uh, working in fashion and, and the business side of it. And I remember thinking, this is really exciting. And I went back to my, my desk and drew my first shot with my name on it with handbags in the window. So that was <laughs> my first. So that was like that very early thing of visioning your future, which yeah. is now such a fashion. But then it was literally... You just did it. Yes, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's yeah. But it, it now has a book title to it, but then it was just doing it. So then from that moment of drawing that first shop, when did you go to having your first shop? Well, so I started um, my business at 18. So I left school, didn't go to university and started designing and selling two shops. Um, it was a few years later when I opened my first shop, but I, I really started the business at 18. So, and I had no idea, I mean, no idea at all. I, I, I was, um, you know, I went to Florence in Italy where I sort of felt it was the home of leather and I just wanted to be immersed in that world. It was like a magnet to me in a really exciting way. Um, and, um, and I started designing, drawing things and found a factory that made some samples for me. Um, and I took them back to actually to Harper's and Queen as it was 
companies and sold it into them through, they did a monthly offer. Um, and it really is a role for, and then I started wholesaling and exporting and then finally we opened our own shop and, and on and on. So um, I've been doing it a long time because I mean, your business is fairly new, isn't it? <laughs> I know, but that is, that is, I mean, it, it was 2008, 1987 did you launch. Yeah. That is, uh, yeah, that is a long time ago. Can I just say for people watching, if you double click on the, on, um, the, the comments they will reduce to just two comments um so there's lots of things about like you know i think when you start something it's so important for anyone starting anything is how do you then make that so identifiably yours you know and i think that i would never look at anything you've designed anya and not know it was anya Heimarch. <laughs> and how do you think you get to that place to do that What's that about, that secret sauce? So the sort of same with your business in the same way. You have a, a sort of a genuine DNA to what you design. So I'm obsessed with fashion with purpose. You know, I think that fashion just for fashion's sake is, is also nice. I think it makes you feel great. But the idea of something that has purpose, meaning it's maybe made from recycled materials or it actually has a real use. I, I love things that help you. I and mean, I think we're busy people, all of us, right? We're schlepping. And ultimately, bags are just about having your things with you when you leave the house. And it, it needs to be organized. So um, so I love that. So I think purpose is a real theme. And I think you, you know, you have a sort of, I suppose, through the DNA of my brand, exactly as it is with you and you more than anyone. There is, you know, it's so, our businesses are so authentic to us, aren't they? I mean, they really are. And if you cut us open, uh, you have both our businesses inside of us, as we discussed when we had breakfast the other day. Um, and we're yeah properly passionate about it and someone once said to me actually there's much too much talk about the word brand and not nearly enough talk about the word behavior and I think we both do behave as our brands I mean I think we are I think it's much harder when you take a sort of a you know designer Coco Chanel who's obviously no longer with us and how they keep those brand traits without the person yeah. being with us hanging around I guess. yeah and there are some which I think are very strong because they're so precious with the brand identity and with the archive of the brand yeah but at the same time you know reinventing the modern version of it but with you and I were still around so yeah well, and is, I just, you know about reinventing because actually you know brands get stuck I think and I mean if I look at how I've reinvented my brand in the many years I've been in business you know it's really been a 360 but there is that thread and that thread I suppose is, is sort of me and my business and you and yours so it's, it's a really interesting subject but I think there is a sort of common value and you know things I love I love purpose I love humor I think life is too short fashion should make you feel great um, and I, I'm obsessed with with um, sustainability and craftsmanship and those are the sort of things I definitely want us to come to before we get there because lots of people are asking and I think it's something we can both um, say is because sometimes you look at somebody and you think, oh, they must have had every chance in the world to do something. And somebody might be watching this thinking, I don't have those opportunities. And I think it's really important to show that what we see on the outside might not be on the inside. So I just like, you know, you didn't, as you said, quite right, you didn't know anything about which factories the right ones, all that kind of stuff. So how do you, and do you believe it's possible that you can start with no, you know, the passion but having to get there and those 10 steps to get there and how you got there. Um, well, so I think, I think business in a funny way is quite easy. I mean, ultimately you are making something or buying something and selling it for more than you make or buy it for. I mean, I always go back to that because I, I think we should, we should demystify it, you know. Um, and obviously people have really complicated business plans and of course that's all great, but ultimately there's no business, as you know more than anyone, that ever goes to a business plan. Um, so I think it's actually relatively simple. I think there are, there are bits, there's a, there's a stage I think in the early few years, which I always call the triangle of pain, which is when you, you kind of establish, you kind of, you know, you're over the excitement of your first business card and your first website and you're sort of in that bit where it's hard to get things made, maybe because of minimums, it's hard to get things sold because maybe Maybe people don't quite know you and it's often quite hard to get paid actually by some customers sometimes yeah. in early days um, and there's always those sticky patches where I think a lot of businesses and probably particularly a lot of female-led businesses are lost and actually I'm always mm -hmm. trying I know you do this as well was trying to sort of support um, women or business people at that stage because if you can just not give up at that stage you want yeah. to you know there are always brick walls that you either have to find your way over, around, or through. Um, yeah. Through, I find, and about you. <laughs> through, I mean, I think it is that kind of, you know, there are, there are moments when, for me, I mean, for you, you started self-sufficient for a long time, whereas I went out for funding earlier. But I think that trusting what you want to achieve is is worth it. You know, you'll talk to many people who might have come out of five meetings that day with different founders and they're going to 
bring all that knowledge of that day and throw it in and suggest this will be great. You know, people said to me, this will be great, but can you do it for millennials only? This will be great, but can you divide up the personalization and, and put the other stuff in a shop? And, and, and so it's that balance between taking advice where it's good advice and, and not disturbing your vision for something which is the strongest thing you've got. You know, it's a really difficult balance that to do. People talk about investors as sort of a as a sort of badge of honor. I've got investors, like it's a sort of like a sort of stepping stone on the journey. And investors, and I am so lucky because I have literally the best investors in the world. But but actually, investors mostly are kind of a booby prize because you can't afford to do it yourself anymore. And you are having to placate or take in their advice, or you know. And and sometimes that's you know what what we do is we we hopefully can see where we're, we're going. We're not always right, mostly, but not always, maybe. But um, so I think that you know it is it's a, it's a sort of tricky a tricky journey often. And but business is the most fun. Is, is that fair to say? I mean, it has to be your all-encompassing passion that takes every minute of your headroom. I mean, it's, a, it's quite a selfish okay, journey. Okay, so if you say that statement, and I have one child and one stepchild, but you have five children. When you make that statement, Anya, how do you then balance that out with your world as a mom as well? Quite badly, <laughs> being really honest. Um, you know, I think the thing is that you have to, was well, first of all, I work with my husband. So already that, that he joined the business when we were expecting our first child. And um, so it is already so quite a family um, sort of occupation. Um, and I think it's also then a, about a huge amount of communication. I mean, it's sort of saying, I'm going to have a really tough week next week because I've got all of this going on. I might be a bit grumpy. And, you know, you tend to, if you're not careful, do what I call dominoes, where you're upset by something in, you know, at work and you can take it home and it can domino into your, your home yeah. life. We have to learn to be disciplined, but we also have to sort of say, I'm really sorry, I'm doing dominoes because actually this has just happened and forgive me and I'm going to be a bit of a, you know, a worry bag tonight, whatever it is. Um, so I think you just have to communicate a lot, actually. But I also think, you know, to the point earlier about women, that the more our children see us mothers doing this role, the more they will believe they can do it too. And I think that is, when I had my discussion with, it, with a gang this morning, um, our job, this generation, this transition generation, if you like, as, as, as you know, we're now working probably as hard as our dads did, but whilst actually having the sort of role models of our mothers in our heads of all the beautiful Instagram worthy meals that my mother would do and, you know, presents and God knows what. Um, and so we're, we're having to sort of find our way through that. But I think it's adjusting. And I think that, you know, the more we do that, the more our, our daughters will feel they can walk into a boardroom and they feel it's their place too. So I think, you know... I don't apologize for it, but I, I do take them on the journey and, and include them in it um, and, and talk a lot about, you know, my failures <laughs> to them very openly. Yeah. And how old are they, Anya? Well, so the youngest is now 18. So we've, we've and the eldest is 32. So we've just finished 28 years of, um, of being parents at schools, which is quite a moment. Oh, my God. Oh my God that is such a... I, mean, I, find, I find that I do now with Lila, I do, um, you know... I think we want to kind of at one stage protect our kids so we don't want to bring it home and and Lila can sometimes parent me too much as well <laughs> in that role reversal because you know I was sort of stressed by some things the last few days and she said mommy you're not feeling very well and don't stress you know <laughs> it's not good for you and can you please make sure you take the day off tomorrow and I said well I've got too much on darling I can't take the day off tomorrow she said no you need to do that so so that's like a real role reversal Anya and that also is quite difficult to, to navigate that because you it's like I know I'm the parent here but you know my my daughter is doing that and then I have to really take take that um you know decide what the balance is but I've also what I started to do recently is um I used to kind of work through the night and go to the loo and do a few emails and come back to bed and you know since COVID really I spend many more evenings at home but I do actually now if I sort of you know, get back and I've had a really stressful day and Charles say, how's your day gone? And I said, it was like the thing. And he said, okay, let's just, let's watch a box set. And it's just about actually totally saying, I'm going to put down my phone and I'm not even going to look at anything and doing that. And I, I live with somebody, I think what I'm fortunate about is I live with somebody who's, you know, you work with somebody, but sometimes when you're a female entrepreneur and you're really working it, that balance, which was traditionally many years ago, the men's role, it can be something that's difficult to navigate because you've got a male ego and you've got just everything, you know, it's that dynamic of everything. You know what I'm talking about. But I find, I think because Charles has been there, you know, he's, he's built up businesses the same age I am now. 
and he knows the stress levels in them and he knows it all there. So just really helpful in that way because That's I right. know he's... You know, but one of the things that's so important uh, for us women is that, you know, we are navigating this, you know, the, the female role. We're now working, as I said, as hard as our dads. We are this transition gang. Uh, and it's very tough on us, I think, genuinely. I think that, you know, we're trying to do it all. I mean, I had three years of five different schools whilst traveling like crazy. You know, it's, it's, it's huge. And, and all that life of being a, a mum, especially to a young family, tends to tradition stick to women just because it always has. Now, I had a conversation with my husband about a year ago where I sort of said, it's interesting, every time we go to a dinner or to something, um, I always write the thank you letter, even though we both go. And, and it's a funny moment. Yeah, let's talk about that, yeah. But, but that's one of those moments where that's nuts. And that probably was the case because maybe the husband was working, the, the, you know, the, the mother was at home during the day and she had the time, but that's absolutely not the case in my relationship. So we have to look at some of those things and kind of go, we have to redraw the lines a little bit. Yeah. I think the fact that, you know, you have Charles who looks after you and says, you know, come and watch the box set and we do need to empty our brains. And I, I, I'm very bad at that. I keep going because I have to, and I work unbelievably harder than I know you do. But actually, if I work as I did all of Sunday, um, you then don't sleep so well, you know, you then, and they, creative people, we need to relax our brains, give ourselves a break, get outside. Um, and and that's, that's about just looking after yourself. So we must prioritize our own sort of, you know, health and sanity, frankly, for, for you know, to yeah. do but it's and even also ways of working. Like I, I'm looking at how I work now on you because I would be every day, maybe a little bit too much in the weeds. All right, it's a, just especially because the business has grown, so there's a, quite a few people in it. And flit, and sometimes flitting makes you feel you're not over anything. I know. Yeah. So I've kind of literally rewritten what are the sort of ten aspects of the business that I need to check in once a week with or once every two weeks with. And that's my focus of that morning and what that's going to be focusing on and really drilling down. So I actually feel I've moved forward. I have a total 360 view on that problem or that opportunity like that, because otherwise that's what also makes you feel you're grasping for air. And it is insane to work seven days a week. You know, I, through COVID, I worked six days a week and you did too. And it is just mm. not going to then be the best person you can be for your team, no. for your, you know, for your family, for everything. Getting that balance is tricky. Um, we've got questions, quite a few questions, um, Anya, and I've got Faith here on the phone, and she's going to also ask us the questions. Um, Faith, do you want to start, darling? Yeah. Okay, okay. So shall we talk a little bit about the theme of International Women's Month this month? So it's hashtag break the bias. Break, yeah. So what does that mean to each of you? Yeah, Anya, what does break the bias mean to you? Well, I think it's about the thing of, you know, the, 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 the white man walks into the boardroom and, and feels it's his place. Um, you know, his father was there and his grandfather was there, and, and so he feels utterly confident. And I think that, for me, it's actually we need women to walk into that boardroom and for be role models so that actually their daughter goes, you know what, that's also my place too. And interesting, I mean, I think, I think it's, you know, International Women's Day is so important. I think this is also so relevant, not only to gender, but to diversity, you know, even... Mm -hmm. So I think so I think we have made great strides actually. So if we can apply that to sort of um, a diverse, diverse and gender-led argument for me, that's yeah. really important. Yeah, I mean, I would find that a classic example to me of breaking the bias is that I had a, a, some new bankers come to see us yesterday. Um, you know, we, we might be working with, I'm not gonna say which bank they were, but anyway, the day before International Women's Day, female-led founder, four men turned up. <laughs> it's hilarious. And I, I went in there and there was my COO, who's a man, and our chief financial lady, who's a woman. And um, I went, um, no women at the table from your bank? And they were like, oh, no, and we realized that before we came. And I was like, I'm a female founder business and you didn't bother to bring one woman with you. We're working on that. Look, I'm wearing your BFF under eye. Lovely. He was doing that. Great. But it was just, and, and also, it's very difficult to recruit in our industry. That comment came back. And I was like, <laughs> I don't give a shit. <laughs> this, is so, this is like so bad on so many levels. Um, and I just, yeah. well, I, think I just so literally well thought. Well done you for calling them on that, I think, in a way. And I think, listen, I, I hate, we all hate the idea of, forcing situations and 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 yet i think there is a period my my because i really struggled I, I sat on lots of panels discussing the subject and i was like you know what it, women are so brilliant we're getting there we've come such a long way in such a short time that's not kind of i don't want to be on a board just because i'm wearing a skirt 
And there was a period yeah. we were invited on every board just because, you know, we're, we're women that are trying to balance it up. But I do believe actually we need to do a bit of a shunt, as I call it, of just getting to the stage. Because, you know, the fact is we are all selling to customers that are, you know, I mean, obviously our business is quite sort of um, feminine, but, you know, the, the world is, is mixed and it's diverse and it's interesting. You can't yeah. have this that are that are just all, you know, male and stale, you know, not, not and I love men. Okay. Not... I mean, a lady's just left this comment, and I find it really interesting, Kajo Joysik. She said, why would it matter if a banker was a man or a woman? I think it wouldn't matter, but when four people come from a company representing a bank to a female-led founder, the fact that one of them wouldn't be a woman says a lot about how they're recruiting. It just does. And I would go further. I would say that actually I think a balanced um, uh, group uh, is very important, not only to... Yeah a different approach it actually i mean it's been proven to make meetings more effective um, there's been a whole raft of of, of, of um studies on, on on this you know balance is important actually i think it's otherwise yep. one view and so I, I do think it's it's the right thing for businesses i really do certainly for banks certainly for banks and i so i think that that's you know in terms of that question faith um i ask you a work still to do yeah ask me anya yeah uh, there's no one better at this. You are so amazing at being so first person in your communication. So in your, in building your business, and I'm addicted to watching your videos, you know, there you're in your bathroom and you're doing makeup on, makeup off, you know, it, it, it's so clever. And I, it's something that's always made me kind of nervous because once you sort of open that the Pandora's box, it's quite hard to sort of go back. And, and I'm so private, I find it sort of difficult. But do you, how, how do you find that just very natural for you? I think it helped a lot, Anya, that I had, I spent 15 years in television. And yeah. I think because I did TV where it wasn't scripted. Yeah. So I think if you do scripted TV, you're being an actress. But when you do non-scripted, um, you're just saying what comes out your mouth. And then you can still have people who edit you in a certain way. So when I did What Not To Wear, people would edit in a certain way. So I was the kind of slightly stern one, Susanna was cosy one. But I always felt very comfortable just to have a conversation because I never do another take, you know? And I think when I started social and started talking on social, the key thing for me is if you feel, oh, that wasn't good, let me do another one, let me do another one, then you're not doing it right. Because then what you're doing is you're trying to put in a box what you're trying to say and you're judging whether it's good or not. And I think the, the real way to get one's head around social media is you put who you are out there and you find the people who it appeals to or not. But to try and think this is what they're like, you know. And there are cer certainly times when I think, oh, maybe... I shouldn't have shared that much, you know? But I also feel that whenever women are candid and share with me, it makes me feel not so alone. It makes me feel I'm not the only one. And I know from being on the other side of that, how many times I felt, am I the only one who feels this? Or, you know, and, and so I feel a sense of responsibility to the audience that the more times I can talk about something that makes you feel a bit weird, the more somebody else will feel more a part of something. I so uh, and that, that's, that's the intention. And, well, you know, I, I think really that's why I just feel all this, the, the, the way social media is around, you know, it's changing a tiny bit, but a way around the persona you want to put out there as opposed to feeling really comfortable with who you are and putting that out there. And we have responsibility as women to, to make younger women feel entirely comfortable with who they are. And they don't have to use a filter. They don't have to catfish or whatever, you know, they just to do that. And, and the more you feel that, then, you know, if you want to go into the boardroom and you wear a sexy pink dress, bloody well do it, you know, but it's like, you've got to love it yourself first. No, if you love it yourself first, you can, you can own it a thousand percent. But if you I yourself are insecure about something, you don't own it. I always think actually the, in fact, I've just written a book, as you know, called If In Doubt, Wash Your Hair. And it's all- Yes, we love. I'm going to just, uh, I had it downstairs. And I was going to have it here. And I just, <laughs> If In Doubt, Wash Your Hair, very funny book, Mania just wrote. Yeah. But it was the, the same way of actually just being really open and sort of saying, this is what I've struggled with. This is what I'm still struggling with. This is what I've cracked. This is what I've borrowed advice and putting it all down. Because I, I do think we have a sort of, sort of our generation has a responsibility to that younger generation, especially in sort of, you know, in, in, in matters of, of, you know, being a woman in the workplace. I think it's, it's really important. And um, so, no, it's funny because it kind of goes against the grain. I think you are best in class at just being incredibly authentic and incredibly open. And, and uh, you're my role model on that. So chapeau, my friend. <laughs> well, you're very sweet. I mean, the thing is, once you have a public platform, you then have to really um, work out how you feel about something when, like, 
the whole thing with Ukraine, all right? And we can't not talk about Ukraine because there are so many um, people um, going through appalling times. But it was very difficult to, because I'm not a political person, mm -hmm. Anya, um, and I just felt so sad with what was going on and I just felt it wasn't a moment and I was scrolling through Instagram all these people going mm -hmm. da 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 and I was saying I'm not feeling that you know I'm not feeling that I'm not feeling that right now and so I needed that just time out to just think what am I actually feeling and you know I want to encourage people to know where to send stuff so I've done a, a bit on where you can send things to the British Red Cross and what you can do for people who are thinking, what can you do? And, and thousands of people sent me ideas of what to do from that Airbnb idea mm. to, you know, mm. trucks and lorries leaving all different parts of wherever you might be living around the world. So, but I also feel lots of people DM me saying, I just, I get escape from you. So can't you just post what you normally post? Cause I want that escape. Mm. And then I was in such a dilemma because I felt it's weird, and I'm going to say this. I felt, but by you making that statement, you're not taking into account how I might be feeling. Mm, that's interesting. Yeah. And because I just, I felt, okay, am I a, not saying this, but it's like, am I the little wind up monkey for you that you can go to the escape? I love it that people can come and have escape because we all need escape from everything. Yeah. But I also felt, well, actually, I'm not, I'm not feeling I can <laughs> switch that on. But, Oh. Yeah, anyway, I don't know what I'm trying to say, but I think it is difficult navigating. Yeah. And in the end, you've just got to say how it is oh, and cool. say what you feel like we're having a conversation now. Well, I think that's the point. I think, you know, you, you have to be authentic, which you are. So if you're feeling sad, you can't sort of be the wind up monkey. I think, interestingly, I'm sure everyone feels this. I am traumatized by the situation. I, I've, I'm so upset by that, actually. And I felt everyone here, I think the whole of London, you know, everyone's just feeling really yeah. low right now. Uh, it's yeah. Um, and in fact, it's really interesting. We were chatting this morning, so sort of saying, I think women can really be the answer to the situation as well, because, you know, we all, I have so many Russian friends, I know you do, and I think they're most amazing. My Russian girlfriends are like bull busting, brilliant, bright, educated, incredible women who roll up their sleeves, and, and so many friends there. Um, so, you know, obviously, none of our, our beef is not with them. But the lovely thing, I'm trying to also take the incredible outpouring of humanity that has been given a platform through social media. And social media, honestly, yeah. The answer here because you actually can't control it and squash it um, and the humanity when I rang a friend of mine who's Polish and I said I just want to say thank you I literally have cried twice yesterday um, yeah. because the generosity and the open and all my Polish friends are like that they're just the most loving religious wonderful people so actually I think the outpouring of humanity has been so empowering that I'm trying to also really take the loveliness of that um, but it's really hard you're right when you have a as you do and I do to a certain extent you know this sort of a platform it feels really crude frankly and and tone deaf to be talking about selling a handbag that feels i just i can't quite sort of get my head around it of course we've all done the donation we're all doing everything we can and, and privately and and as a company but it's very hard and yet i also think we have to balance the fact that um you know we don't want uh you know putin to kind of actually ruin other people's lives you know and i've got teams you've got teams so we have to kind of keep businesses going that's what provides a healthy economy which in turn provides oh. And the government so we've got to tread a fine line through this and we all had that same experience with um you know with 9 11 and i remember we were doing a big event actually in a big launch and like do you carry on is it weird but actually no we will yeah. do no we're not going to stop yeah. so i think you know we have to find our way through this but i think we're all a bit shell-shocked and it is absolutely only right and fair that we're all allowed to take a moment to to feel and to digest because it's really really upsetting we can't imagine living in a, an environment where you can't do things because the news is, is you're given is incorrect. And I think it's difficult, but I think that that sense, the strength of women around the world is very powerful. 100%. And I think it, it, it you know, can make a real difference. So um, it, it's really a question of actually women being strong enough to influence. Mm -hmm. So much of politics has been so male. Um, and, and, you know, if you look at the, the, the you know, the, the sort of percentage of women in, 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 in politics around the world, I think it has an influence on, on the outcomes, actually. So um, anyway, it is absolutely heartbreaking. I mean, I feel, as I say, I feel quite traumatised by it, as we all do. And we're just all trying to sort of find our way through, really. Yeah, I found that, but there was a Balenciaga fashion show. I found it very odd watching all the fashion weeks, actually, through. I felt really uncomfortable watching it. And it was only because it came up on my feed that Balenciaga did this show and they showed this kind of like sort of post Stalingrad environment of this sort of post apocalyptic world with snow. And it was very, it was quite strong, but it was just 
yeah, it, it's very difficult, this one. And yeah, I want to end with, because there are people in the UK and they're only going to Sainsbury's or Waitrose to get your bag. So can we just talk, for those of you who don't live in England, Anya launched a really sustainable bag, um, which was, you did it first with um, Waitrose, right? With Waitrose. And, and it was like, you know, the designer bag, but it was the pickup bag and it was like two pounds or 10 pounds, I can't remember, but like sold out in flashes. All about the plastic bag scenario i am a plastic bag so tell me how that's going on when are you launching at sainsbury's so we launched in uh, we launched already in sainsbury's that was the first launch we're launching in waitrose at the end of march if um we, d we don't have the exact date yet because it's just it's just coming in so we just need to coordinate so if people follow um on our instagram that will tell them the date the moment we know it um and we're and we're we're going to be launching all around the world so it's a it's a really lovely project it's it's interesting that um, bags for life uh, are, are not the, the solution because people often take them every week or every two weeks. The stats are quite scary um, and not wanting to disc because we're all trying to do the right thing and it's a sort of journey in the right direction. But I wanted to design a bag that was not only desirable, so it wasn't something you sort of threw under your sink and left there, but you actually wanted to reuse because that reuse mindset is important, but that also... Yeah guaranteed to be recycled so it's obviously made completely of recycled materials every aspect of it but that it has this really cool pocket that you turn the, uh, the the bag inside the pocket and on the back of the pocket it has a free post address and you just pop it in the letterbox and we guarantee to to recycle it 100 percent because most bags are either stashed under the sink or they're left in hedgerows um so it's it's trying well, to I mean, it's fantastic apart from your brand is so phenomenal nobody wants to post it back to you Anya. Well, you know, know they just all want to keep them but but the concept I love and, and getting that sense of responsibility, but also through fun and design and not just earnest, you must do this, I'm being preached to, you know, there's very different ways to tell messages so that people listen yeah. and want to do it. Yeah. Do you want to encourage? And it's, it's yeah. a program. Yes. Okay. Faith has got a couple more comments. So yes, Faith, far away. Um, so an interesting one here. One says, have you ever struggled in the industry with prejudice or judgment as a female founder? Anya? Uh, honestly, um, only once, truthfully. I mean, most of all, I've actually found it sort of quite powerful. I quite like being the only girl in the room sometimes. It's quite fun. Um, but I did have a, a one meeting where someone did something that wasn't very fair. And I remember saying, could I have a word about it after the meeting? And, um, and, and they said, you know, Anya, you must take the emotion out of this. And I remember thinking, no, what I do is emotion. I bring, you know, how can you run a business without emotion? How can you produce a product without emotion? And I thought that was very much a sort of, you know, when that person had no other ammunition left, that was a sort of rather... That, that was the, what they'd revert to, yeah. How about you? Yeah. Me, I think, um, I was saying this this morning, I grew up in a time when, when I look back at movies now from the 80s and 90s, my God, they're so biased. It's just appalling. But I grew up in a world where I thought that was the only way. And I worked in a very man's world. You know, I worked in a, on a um, selling commodity funds. And I was literally the only woman in a room of sort of 60 men. And I just felt inadequate. You know, it, it, it was nothing. I didn't feel I had rights to feel anything else. But then what was interesting is from the age of 34, I, or even sort of, probably 30 actually, I work for myself. And that's the way, in a way that I then, you know, found that even though I might have challenges and I might have, you know, when I went to Investment Trinity London, I saw 28 um, VCs of which only three of them had women in the room. Um, you know, it, it was interesting that journey and what's a very male dominated journey and only, you know, 2% or 3% of businesses funded um, by VCs are female funded businesses, which is just the most appalling stat. So mm -hmm. I think there's so much work to be done for women who wish to be entrepreneurs. And as you said earlier, you can do it, you know, hand to mouth, hand to mouth, but you, you know, raising funding accelerates growth if you spend the money correctly. And yeah. I feel that that industry has a long way to go. Yeah. I think it also though, VCs would probably say that they get many less female led businesses to put to them. So I think that stat is probably slightly sort of biased by that as well. But I do think though, I don't feel there's a, a negative to being a woman, honestly. I think there's a, a negative to not being confident. And so therefore I think 
about going in there, being completely comfortable with what you're proposing, being excited about it, and being very realistic about it, and getting a great team around you, which shouldn't just all be women. I think it's great to have that diverse. Um, and then I actually don't think there is a, a real negative, but it's up to all of the women listening in now and us to talk about it openly, confidently, and to say it's completely doable. And that's just, I think we can honestly quite easily. I worry that actually men might be the inferior, it might be the reverse quite I soon. Know, I do worry for men. Um, purple Purple Hello says, Anya, can you make your reusable bags available for your international supporters? Yes, we are. So we are talking to supermarkets around the world and we're launching it around the world. So it will come. I'm sorry, it's a little bit slow, um, but it's happening and it's really exciting. So, um, so yeah, watch the space. Uh, Sharon is saying, will you be bringing out your ranges above a size 14? Are you still doing clothes, Anya? We do very few clothes um, and we tend to do sort of medium, large, small. And I, I don't like anything to be too small. I like it loose anyway. So, um, so we're, very, we're very body aware, actually. And I think that's part of diversity and inclusiveness because how ridiculous that, you know, most of the world aren't a size 8 or a size 10. So why on earth are we well, making... Well, all... types of women are a size 16 and above. But there you go. There you go. really want the real stat. And it's a stat that I'm sure has grown since then when I remembered that stat when I was doing What Not To Wear. And it was just so excluding somebody talked about the the bias in that and i think there's a lot of work to be done on it um Faye, uh, do, but anya do you have the bag here you can show a bag and coffin saying do you have a bag can you show us your bag come on and get it well you want to see the sainsbury's one or a just a bag yep. you a yeah. we want to see the waitress one <laughs> we want to see the waitress one don't we um and also the beautiful sneakers they want to know about um yeah, lots of things. And bring back, what's the other one? She's not in there, but we'll bring back the coat with the ghost on the pockets. I mean, there's so many things we want to ask her to bring back. Yes. <laughs> Anya, back. many Come questions. Back. Can I just say also, bring back the coat with the ghost on the pockets? I know, I know. That's so lovely. Okay. Can you show us? So which bag is this, Anya? Show us. Lift it up. Same this bag, if you can see. Can you see? So it's called the... Okay. God, it's so chic. It's fabulous. Oh pounds and it's from Sainsbury's isn't that lovely and it has this really cool this from someone who works with me at the cool pocket you put the bag inside and then on the back yeah. you have so you can always you never this can always always be recycled really easily but it's like this really great size and it's like a really nice bag genius. it's genius it's going to be the beach bag of everyone coveted bag how many did you make I, oh quite a number of thousand but there, this is oh, the one that's coming so this is quite exciting this is the uh, okay. The Waitrose one, which comes at the end of March, which looks like this. Oh, we're going to see the colour of the Waitrose one. Oh, my God, but Anya has got Trini London yellow on it. <laughs> oh, my God, we're seeing it here. I love this. It's oh, so Anya, how do I get one? We'll get you one, we'll get you one. Um, but it's going to be it's going to be a bit of a, a bit of a mad. So it's we're, we're hoping this project is not a limited project. It's meant to be forever. Yeah. But and they sell out very quickly. So we're just trying to kind of get enough stock. So, but we'll keep everyone posted if they, if they, um, if they sort of sign up and they can, we can show them when the dates are coming and what's coming where, so we can try and navigate. Yeah. Got a really fun yeah. little case in my desk too. Can you see? <laughs> what is that? Bananas? What are they? My little pencil case. <laughs> Got these mad things on my desk. Oh my God, I love that. Now, Anya, do you sell in Australia? We do. Yeah, we do. Um, everyone's saying, I want the waitress one, I want the waitress one. A lot of people want that, darling. Faith, last two questions. Okay, can I just say quickly, this has been such an incredible conversation. I feel so inspired to walk into the office tomorrow. Oh. Um, one a question here says, what would you say to someone who feels like it's too late in their life to start a business? Well, too late. never too late. I mean, you started at 18. I started at... 50. <laughs> um, I think it's, it's, I would just say it's never too late and you're never on your last idea and never feel your age when you're starting it in, in the middle of your life. I mean, I feel I'm not, I'm only just in the middle of my life now because I know I'll live to a hundred. So that's how I look at things. <laughs> but I would say it's about the energy you feel. So if you look in the mirror and you feel full of energy, whatever your age is, you have opportunity. It is never, ever too late to start. I feel more energetic now in some ways, I think. And also I sort of, I think I know who I am more. I think it's a lovely thing about age that is, is, is super exciting. You, you've learned so many lessons. You're much, you, you just don't sweat the small stuff. You just kind of crack on. Um, so I think, and also I think if you have a great product idea, uh, launching that with experience, um, and by the way, maybe a product idea that is relevant to your age group, you know, because actually there's, you know, everyone's living longer. There's so much. So it's, it's, it's never.
just go for it and enjoy it. It's so much fun. Exactly. We love it. We never do anything else. Faith, last question. Okay. Um, can I ask about your hiring processes, um, both of you as founders? Like, How do you ensure that a lot of women have opportunities in your businesses? Do you want to start that, Anya? Well, I always um, hire people. Like, um, I would say that you're kind of curating this lovely like dinner party. You know, I always want to work with people I love because ultimately that saves a thousand words. Clearly, they need the experience and um, and and you know they need to be able to do the job. But actually, I, I love curating a group I want to spend my days with, and I think it means that therefore we want to be together. And we always talk about going on business trips as going on holiday because it's really fun. You know, park the kids, get on the plane, have a glass of wine. It's really nice. Um, but I think though, um, in terms of women, I have a very very female heavy organisation. I really rate women. I love working with women. Women. We have a lot of men as well. Um, it's funny, I did a big group call this morning and I realized there was only one man on that particular call. You know, it's interesting, there were sort of 30, 30 women. Um, but um, I think that it's about being kind, isn't it? It's about being sensible. I was reading something about, you know, someone was fighting um, on International Women's Day for paid leave uh, after losing a baby. Well, who would not pay someone? I mean, that's just so... Yeah to me that I, I, I was shocked frankly that was even a thing um, so it's about kindness and common sense isn't it it's about humanity so I think all those things into, into a business and I think it's about um, you know what's interesting in COVID is about how you have people work in the office environment so how you make it a good environment so that you're coming in with purpose and doing things and there's more of a, I think moving forward there is more flexibility but um for us, you know, we are over 80% women at Trinity London. And, you know, we've, at the very beginning, I hired people who maybe had a little less experience, but we were a very tight team and those people have grown in the business. And then, you know, as we've grown, we've hired in other people and some people have had a lot more experience in certain areas, but other people bring the experience of understanding the brand fully and understanding our purpose fully. And I think I never... I never look at what university somebody went to and what degree they got. I'm just going to say that now. I don't, which is a, probably a really bad thing for my daughter to notice. But I think she knows that. And I've maybe said that where she's heard it before. But I feel, you know, you can sense in an interview if somebody is a grafter, if they're passionate, if they are kind, you know, if they have a sense of responsibility and energy and excitement. Um, and I think it's those things that are most important long term. And I do agree with you, Anya, that if you have a team that get on really well together, it makes life so much easier. And, you know, if there's issues around it, you have to kind of, you know, the most important thing is the teams get on well. And I think yeah. the, the idea that you take people through the ranks. So, you know, I've worked with people, many people here that have been here 20 years more. Um, and it's the idea that you grow them. And actually, sometimes I have brought in, and you need to, of course, bring in people with sort of, you know, outside experience. But actually mostly people coming through knowing the culture of the company is is, is incredible yeah. and where yeah. you do that sometimes you need to supplement but that's that's my big passion also i want to talk about trini london babies because you must have had a lot of anya hindmarch babies i call them trini london babies because they're people who started with us and then they got pregnant and then they came back and we you know we've had two of our employees go through that process now and i find you know offering the right environment for a new mother is so important and it's a real responsibility as a female founder even more than I mean it's a responsibility of anyone to look at how that works but I I feel anything that goes back to giving you an idea of grass ceiling glass ceiling etc it's about the fact that once you become mother will you not have the opportunities open to you and that has been around for so long and I really feel that's changed a lot but I think there's still a bit of a way to go. I think there is. I mean, I think that's all about just proof. And we've had um, many examples of people who've had, you know, babies, three babies, and, and have still got the top jobs here. So uh, but that's all about, I think, also, it's a two-way street, that. It's also about the, the, the woman and the mother coming back and, 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 you know, getting back in the seat and, and being very communicative about, you know, because, of course, they need flexibility and so on, but just working. Yeah well. So I think the onus is also on us as women, not just as, as, um, as employees. Yes, work that's certainly yeah. love in my design team we kind of go okay you have a baby next year okay i'll do one this year and then we sort of we'd <laughs> so that we could kind of manage the you know which is sort of mad but, but you know the, the, everyone sort of just women do they grow after we all have a season we make it work we, we support yeah. it. it's a lovely thing so it's totally doable it is totally doable and it's been such a joy um i can't thank you <laughs> enough 
for coming to have this conversation with us. And just, you know, I think having such an inspiring chat about what it is to start a business and and how you can start with nothing and, and go really far. And um, yeah, it's really... I've loved every second. Everyone for listening in. So I'm just going to say, Anya's written the most amazing book, um, which is about, it, when in doubt, wash your hair. Um, there it is. And it is hilarious, actually. It's really funny. I bought it at Selfridges a while ago. Um, <laughs> and um, we all know she has amazing bags. And, um, and uh, yeah, so if you're new to Anya, which would be really like nearly impossible, then um, we'll leave the link to anyahighmarch.com at Thanks. the bottom. So okay. Take so care, darling. Bye, everybody. All right. Bye, Bye Anya.